Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy and this is of particular significance if you drive an electric vehicle. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Rob H, Ben White, Maximum Gravy, Austin Whitsitt, John Kays, Tommy Swagnets, Michael Kahn, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuka, Bose Nail, Samson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, uh, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neeland, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. Yeah? Yeah, yeah it's on the other is. side. You guys hear us in Discord? Yes. Yes, we can. Good morning, Nathan. Hey, Hap. Good morning. Good to have you. Hop is shop. What's happening, Hop? I'm just laying here, chilling. It's early in the morning. I'll be getting ready to go fishing soon. Got to get all the fishing I can, man. You know, they're chunking up now, getting ready for the winter. And I don't do the winter fishing thing, so. Where are you, anyway? I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, you're not that far from me. Well, Pennsylvania's big. Depends on where you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm about 80 miles from Philly. Yeah, you're a few hours from me. Yeah, I was raised in Philly. I was actually born in New York. was I, but it's sad, the condition in New York right now. It breaks my heart. You know, Biden wants to get, well, supposedly, I guess the school board wants Biden, you know, to do something about the unruly parents that have a problem with these mandatory mask uh, situation there. Yeah. They're going to go after them. They're going like, <laughs> to, they're going to treat them like terrorists. It's, it's, it's insane what's going on. You know, people think this is going to go away. This ain't going away, man. This ain't going away. I'm just talking about how dirty this city got. I don't even want to go into those areas. That's whatever it is it is. The powers that be are the powers that be, and there's nothing that we can do because we don't know how to unite. But anyway, it's just so dirty in this city, like rats everywhere, stink of urine and combined with marijuana and feces. Oh, it's disgusting. Wow. See, I haven't been down in Philly for a long time. I, I left uh, 
I went back down for a while down in 2007, and then I left in 2008, came back up to the mountains because I just I can't stand it. I, I hate the city. I hate it. I, was, I wasn't born in New York City. I was born upstate, Oneida. So I was a country boy, you know? And then when I was five, the problems that my mom had, you know, with whatever, we had to move. So <laughs> she chose Philadelphia, and I went, man, I was like, I didn't like it. I, I was like, I didn't understand how trees were going out of concrete. That was one, I'll never forget this, I just, because I remember asking my mom, <laughs> how does this happen? I, yeah, seriously, <laughs> how are trees growing out of cement, Mom? I don't like it here. I want to go home. Yeah, I don't like it. I started fighting right away. I mean, it was unbelievable, man. We started having race problems. You know, I, I never even seen a black person before in my fucking life until I went to Philly. Yeah, you know, I didn't even, I, I, I didn't have a problem with it until I started seeing the reactions that, I mean, life in the city, especially Philly or New York or, you know, Detroit or any of these fucking stupid cities that they horn us into. It's just, it's sickening. That's the whole thing. That's the, that's why we're not united anymore because we're all, they tricked us into getting into all these cities. Oh, what are you doing out there on your farm? It's boring. What kind of life is that? Here, sell me your farm and go to the city. Yeah. <laughs> And look what they're doing now, man. They're buying up everything. They don't want us to own anything. They don't want us to have any kind of small businesses going. They don't want us to. They're going to eliminate it. They started last year. They're going to keep doing it. Isn't that just a corporations. Proper, isn't that just a property of capitalism? Like, it, in its decay, it becomes fascism. That's just the property Correct. of it. And, you know, just like socialism becomes communism. Correct. Again, you never own anything anyway in America. I don't know what you think you own. You may think you own a house. You may think you own things. You don't own nothing. Because the minute you can't pay property tax, I buy house. That's right. First, they'll come in and sheriff sell all your shit. <laughs> they'll literally take your shit. So, yeah, you don't know a fucking thing. I mean, you got to keep paying for it and paying for it and paying for it. It's funny. People's, people's mindsets of, yeah, I own a lot of, yeah, you don't own shit, dude. <laughs> oh, when I was in Alabama, I met this one kid at Home Depot, and he was buying some, you know, some stuff he was working on. So I was talking to him. I said, you need anybody to put your flaws in? He's like, I might. You got a number? I'm like, yeah. Give my number. He tells you where he is. I'm like, I don't even know where that is. I just moved here not even a year ago from the city, New York. He's like, well, I'll have to meet you somewhere because you'll never find it. Buying plumbing stuff. And I asked him. He's telling me he's putting a house up in the country right by where his parents' house is. And I'm like, do you got to get permits and everything for that stuff? He's like, permits? I don't get permits for nothing. I said, what about the plumbing and the electric? Don't you have to? He's like, we don't do that over here. We put it in. We set it up. Let them come and try and give me a hard time. I was like, okay. Like this pro We've had this property since the 1700s. Like, wow, that's the way to do it. They don't report anything. Yeah, see, <clears throat> that's what they mostly eliminated, though. That's what they've been trying to eliminate completely. They don't want people <clears throat> owning land, having the family, you know, handed down from the family for hundreds of years. They, they want to eliminate that. So that dude's lucky. You know, anybody down there like that, there, and there's a lot of people, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people like that. I don't you, think he's you know, lucky because I asked him. I don't think he's lucky. We got into many conversations. He's part of. He's part of. Uh, what do you call that? Militia and everything. They they were back. This is ten years ago. They were getting ready to roll. There's a lot of stuff we don't know about that. 
lot of people inside of America in the, you know, down in the southern states and not just the southern states, even in Michigan. There's malicious form that ready to roll, so who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I know they were ready to roll 10 years ago and then something stopped it. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. There was a lot of people ready to roll and then they didn't. You know, there's a lot of people ready to roll right now. They just don't know how to go about it. You know, it's almost impossible. Because they'll, they'll, they'll snatch you up for terrorism. Like, you know what I mean? They're domestic terrorists. That's, that's what they'll do now. Well, Who knows anymore? Who knows? Sorry, Dave. I was just breaking up the dead air. So as I was saying before, yeah, Tenth Man, it was packed with information. I forgot what show that was, whatever you played yesterday at uh, 5 o'clock my time. He had so much information from the other side. I think I even said something about that they got they're screwed. Yeah, all of the rebuttals completely contravene the information that Tenth is citing, and they're all from Globe sources. So, yeah, they are screwed. Correct, yeah. I, I think that's when I said something like that. I don't remember. I'm like, as he's, as he's going off and off and off, and then you find out it's from their own side. It's like, wow, where did, where, where did they go from here? Well, they they don't they do the, what they usually do on the anti flat earth side, which is just circle jerk us around to the beginning of the argument again, and ignore all rebuttals. That'll probably be the most prevalent choice. Just ignore it. Yeah, like a Kumo virus. The other day, when I when I brought that up to him, and you very handily showed him that he does not know what the Coriolis effect is. And he still thinks you don't know. So it's like there's a there's something there's a disconnect somewhere. Yeah. He can't he's on our opponent's side, so he can't concede that we're right and he's wrong. Because the aspects that he is wrong on are aspects that he's being told by his own side are correct. Yeah. Conservation of momentum, that's Coriolis. That's how it explains it. Oh, okay, says Virus. That's how it is then. They wouldn't lie to me. Now, the fact that they're being... That's the whole point of the argument, right? We're being lied to, left, right and centre. And us in this particular corner appreciate that. But our opponents definitely don't. So when they present their standard anti-flat earth rhetoric to us, they think we're going to swallow it. Like, no, no, no. Just because you've been told it or found it printed or can cite it doesn't mean it's true. As was demonstrated to Virus. He's reading out a citation about how to calculate the force in Coriolis effect when you're travelling over a curved surface and how the conservation momentum is what you'd use to calculate it. It's like he himself described it as a fictitious force 10 minutes before describing that. So he's aware that it's fictitious force, but yet he's more than happy to cite something that says he can calculate what's going on in the deflection and the retention and the velocities and all of the rest of the forces that are involved in this explaining away why they haven't got any drift. He thinks that's all true. Here's how they explain away how there isn't drift, although he's not saying that. He just doesn't recognise it. Akumu means nightmare. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you explained to him how... Um, you explained to him how... Um, what did he say it was? Conservation of momentum or angular momentum? How that's not Coriolis. Still a disconnect? Yeah, correct. He detailed how it was... The both of them was the phrase he used. And he's describing two different things. He'd also thrown in... Um, I forget what he threw in. There was a third thing he threw in intentionally just to add confusion. 
But yeah, he just needs to sidestep and double speak away from the fact that he hasn't got drift on a turning earth as is claimed. That's the bottom line. They claim there's drift, there isn't. So we end up in arguments like that with people like Virus. Well, they, as long as they can beg the question, whether it's the earth is turning underneath or the ter earth is turning with, they just want to beg the question that the earth is turning. You know? Spot on. Exactly. They want to be able to say, earth's turning underneath and we don't see Coriolis because of a conservation of momentum. So in that statement, they're explaining why we don't see drift, but they've already begged the question in the statement. Earth's turning, but we don't see drift. Or, earth's turning and we do see drift. We've got Coriolis deflection at 15 degrees an hour. Thanks, Bob. They'll chant. Because they've got their Coriolis deflection in the way the globe's actually claiming it, which obviously involves Earth turning underneath and you observing things from that non-inertial turning reference frame. But the moment you point out that we're not observing anything drift from a non-inertial turning reference frame, they go, we wouldn't expect to see drift. Earth's turning and things are turning with it when they leave. Now, that completely contradicts what the globe's claiming. No, why would you, the flat earther, expect to see drift? I wouldn't, it's what the globe claims. No, you're telling me that we should expect to see drift. No, that's what the globe claims. No, it's what you're claiming and you're an idiot and don't understand Coriolis. That's how the argument goes. Amazing. And it is just an optical effect, right? That's the whole thing with the Coriolis. It, it's, it's optical. It's, it's an, an illusion, illusion correct? Yeah, an optical illusion. Something seeming to take a curved path because you're on a roundabout. So you look at a plane in the air, it looks like it's going away from you and then coming back and then away from you and coming back. Wow, that plane's erratic in the air, isn't it? I can see it. It's apparently moving all over the place. Uh, hello, you're spinning on a fucking roundabout. That's why it's moving. There's nothing changing in the actual path of the plane. Just seems that way because you're turning beneath it. The globe claims to have that. Globe claims we'll see drift because we're turning beneath stuff roll on us as flat earthers uh, we don't see any drift nothing's drifting and then they tell us you expect to see drift do you no we're pointing out that we don't and the globe claims we should so you're saying we should see drift and i'm saying the globe said we should no you're saying we that's how it goes on i like how you pitted neil degrasse tyson against the anti-flat earthers yeah yeah that was good because it really is their problem that they need to, you know, get their story straight. It's not, you know, we, we don't have a dog in that race. Exactly. It's anti-flat Earth with their begging the question, Earth's turning, but we won't see drift. Versus Neil deGrasse Tyson, who says Earth's turning and we see drift in a football. Well, okay, you both got the same assumption that Earth's turning. But the reality is we're not seeing the effect. And the official rhetoric is Tyson. So Neil deGrasse Tyson saying, we see the ball drift through the goal because Earth turns beneath. That's his claim. It is that simple. Now, the reality is that if Earth turns underneath the football, it f turns underneath the blimp that's filming the game also. And you bloody well notice. You don't. That's why he uses a football or sometimes a bullet to make the example. Because it's in the air for a fraction of a second. So there's no long-term effects like there would be on a blimp hovering above the ground as it turns beneath, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson's example. So we say, look, the blimp's not drifting away at 15 degrees an hour. If you're claiming the ball's drifting through the goal, so would the blimp be. It's not attached. Launch the anti-flat earth rebuttal. We wouldn't expect to see any drift. So we wouldn't expect to see the goal then. We wouldn't expect to see this example being given by Tyson that the ball's curving through the goal because earth's turning beneath then. We wouldn't expect to see that. Actually, the ball left the ground and conserved your assumption that the Earth's turning. So there wasn't any drift. So Neil deGrasse Tyson's just talking nonsense, is he? No, he's not. He's talking globe claims that don't happen. We don't see drift, even though he's saying you see it in a ball that will naturally take a curved path regardless of what you do. But he's saying that curved path that ball took is because of Earth turn. So Earth is turning beneath aeroplanes then, because they're not attached. And that's what Coriolis is, us looking at it seem to curve. But that means we're turning underneath it to see it curve, which shortens flight times. It's absurd. So they have to come up with something that begs the question that they're still spinning and explains why we don't see drift, the very drift they're claiming we will. Yeah, he actually said that the, the goal was scored because it was aided by the Coriolis effect, Earth's rotation. Yeah, that would be it drifting from your vantage point, watching it in the stands curve through the goal. 
Well, the ball's just travelling straight. It's actually only a visual effect, an illusion, that it looked like it curved through the goal. Actually, the goal moved under the ball to bring it in line with the path of the ball, which, from your vantage point on the stand, <laughs> looks like a curve, because it's Coriolis. That's what he's claiming. It just doesn't happen. It would shorten flight times. 